thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's been a great conference so far. Uh, I'm excited to tell you about this stuff. Uh, so um, I, I'm going to start by apologizing to two groups of people, those who have already seen this talk uh, because there's not that much that's new, and those who don't like algebra because there's going to be some algebra um, in the, there's going to be a lot of algebra. Uh, but I'm going to start with geometry. So um, let's give a definition that, um, well, the definition of a beautiful domain. Most um, symplectic talks begin by defining some sort of symplectic manifold. Uh, this is going to be um, with some one form lambda. It is a symplectic manifold. Um, well, the symplectic manifold is a M still, and now I need a symplectic form, which is going to be D lambda. Uh, so lambda must have been a uh, one form. And D lambda is now an exact two form, so that's a symplectic two form, uh, such that the Liouville vector field Z uh, defined by uh, I Z um, D lambda equals lambda. I'm going to start writing omega instead of v lambda, lambda pretty soon, don't worry. The Lugo vector field uh, points out. Uh, I missed a thing. Compact. And with boundary. Uh, points out. Along the boundary then. Okay. Um, so this is some convexity property, um, and this is kind of the reason that um, kind of Lenny and Tyler had these pictures where there was stuff at the top and stuff at the bottom. And the top is kind of where things point out. Okay, those are new whole domains, and we've seen a bunch of examples of those today. Uh, the first example is. T star uh, Q uh, with uh, lambda is some PI DQI. Uh, the other standard example is uh, affine varieties. Uh, with the restriction of the radial Liouville form from C with um, restriction. sum of um, x i d y i minus y i d x i. Uh, and if you're not used to thinking about Liouville domains, pick one of these um, and just pretend it's that for the entire talk. Uh, okay. Uh, of course, these are also both examples of something called a Stein domain, or Weinstein domain, but that's not important for, for right now. Okay, so associated to these things, we're going to put, uh, we like Liouville domains, and we're going to put some Liouville domains in the boundary of our Liouville domains and study that situation. The definition, a stop in a Liouville domain which I'll abbreviate to LD. Um, um, I should say, I stop sigma. Sigma in a Liouville domain. M is a hypersurface with boundary of the boundary. Draw a picture for this in a minute. Actually, I'll draw a picture for this right now. Um, so, um, 
well, I'll at least once draw this picture. So inside here we have some some manifold of the boundary with boundary. Um, for co-dimension one, I guess I said a hypersurface, so that means co-dimension one. We have a hypersurface with boundary of the boundary such that uh, sigma, and then I take the one form and I restrict it to sigma, is itself a Liouville domain. Uh, so this is essentially the same thing as um, the as um, Eli Ashberg's notion of a Weinstein pair in the Liouville setting, um, and it's essentially the same thing as a sector um, due to Ganatra, Pardon, and Shende. Uh, so let's make that um, an approximate definition. A Liouville sector. Uh, John would give a slightly different definition. Um, it is um, a Liouville domain equipped with one or more disjoint stops. Um, one, well, with some number, could be zero. usually talk about a sector, um, and then I'll like move the stop around, um, and I'll get families of sectors and things like that. Okay. So let's do some examples for that. Uh, so if you have um, you can take W inverse of point, um, this should be thought of as a point near infinity, where W from M to C is uh, holomorphic. Okay, I'm doing symplectic manifold. So what do I mean by that? Uh, you could just take like a reasonable symplectic vibration. Uh, in in mirror symmetry, you're often supplied with these Ws called superpotentials. Uh, it's very natural to take the pre-image of a point near infinity. Uh, maybe if you aren't used to thinking about superpotentials, another option is you can take a Legendrian. That was a question. rise to a stop by looking at a standard neighborhood. Uh, a standard thickening. Okay. Um, uh, to lambda in T star lambda um, in the one jet of lambda which lies in the boundary of them. Uh, so this is the standard uh, neighborhood theorem for Legendrian submanifolds, and then this is the stop. Uh, and when I write T star in J1, I'm really saying take small disk bundles rather than the entire thing. Uh, but that's too much writing. Okay. So that's what a stop is. And and what a sector is. And associated to this gadget, uh, we get an uh, algebraic invariant called the partially wrapped Fukai category. And the sector has an invariant. Uh, 
category. Uh, which I'm going to write W of um, um, sigma. Um, uh, and well, before I say the end, this, if you know what Fukai categories are, great. If you don't, it's just some Fleur theoretic invariant of, of the manifold. The fact that it's a category is convenient, but not kind of the main point. The main point is that it's a Fleur theoretic invariant of this sector. Okay. Um, and this comes with um, a functor. the fully wrapped uh, Fukai category of M. So one thing I can do is I can forget about sigma, uh, and then I just have an ordinary Liouville domain. And to an ordinary Liouville domain, there's also a notion of Fukai category. And the thing with sigma maps to the thing without sigma. W of M. Okay. So that's what we have so far. Uh, so maybe just for people who are used to thinking about this sort of thing, uh, what is this, um, what is the Fleur theory that we're doing? Well, in W of M, we're looking at Rabe chords between Lagrangians with Legendrian boundary. Uh, and in W of M sigma, we're looking at Rabe chords between Lagrangians with Legendrian boundary, which don't cross sigma. So all we're doing is we're choosing extra nice dynamics, and then we're throwing out the things that cross sigma. Okay. So this comes with an extra additional, additional structure, piece of structure. which is the form of, or cap, or cup functor, which I'm going to write I sigma. And that goes from now the rep Fukai category of sigma to the rep Fukai category of the sector M sigma. So I, had a, I have a map from this to the Rapukai category of M. I also have a map from the Rapukai category of sigma to the Rapukai category of M sigma. And it's already reasonable to guess that there's going to be a relation between these two functors. And I'll get to that in a little bit. But for now, I want to tell you what is this. Uh, so this sends a Lagrangian in sigma to some Lagrangian in here, and it's L cross some path in a, um, in a local picture, which I'm going to draw. So um, here is M, here's the boundary of M, and here is sigma. Convenient to have kind of, boundary of M is going to be one dimensional, then sigma had better be zero dimensional. So now I want to say, what path do I cross with? Well, I'm going to cross with this path. Again. Okay. Any questions uh, about the, the players at this point? Um, so the, there's no co-normal bundle. Uh, there's, so I have this co-dimension one thing in the boundary that's co-dimension two in the ambient Liouville domain. And uh, it turns out its normal bundle is always trivial. 
Uh, and so I'm trivializing the normal bundle and I'm seeing the boundary is um, a hyperplane in that normal bundle, or is a line in that normal bundle, and I'm seeing the manifold to one side of the boundary. So uh, basically, um, I'm, where did I write that? The, we had this pr um, projection to C, and I'm working in a model which says, ah, in fact, any stop locally has a projection to C. Okay. All right. So, so those are all the ingredients. So what, what do we do with this? Well, two. So this is operations. What is it? Operations. So given a stuff, stuff, there are two natural things you can do to it. delete it. We delete it, there's no more stop. That's the thing we can do to a stop. Uh, and B, we can double it. Okay. Uh, and geometrically, what does that correspond to? So A, um, um, well, let's get rid of that. Um, We went from one stop to no stops. Or we can go um, to two stops. That's the entire picture of the, the two obvious things we can do. We can turn one into zero, or we can turn one into two. OK. So both of these. Algebraic formulas. At the level of the kind of categories. All right, so. Yeah, you use the kind of positive flow to, yeah, to, to push it to be disjoint from itself. So I want essentially a, to choose a ray vector field, which is also positively transverse to the stop itself. Just a little bit, yeah. Yes, the Legendrian would be just the ray push. Okay. So A, um, this well, this is the map, right? If I delete the stop on Fukai categories, I should go from the partially wrapped thing to the fully wrapped thing. And so that is this map, this functor, from the partially wrapped to the fully wrapped. Um, and there's a formula for it. Um, Theorem. Uh, so I proved one version, and then Ganatra, Pardon, Shende proved another. If um, sigma is nice, uh, and I'm not going to say what nice means. Um, my version and their version have like very slight, have slightly different, uh, I guess John says, substantially different interpretations of nice. Um, but if sigma is nice, then um, this, this functor is 
uh, a quotient by those Lagrangians which appear in the image of I sigma. So we had this, this cup puncture. It turns Lagrangians in sigma into Lagrangians in the Liouville domain. And when the stop is nice, um, that characterizes what it means to remove the stop right? algebraically. Well, two can actually be done as a corollary to, or B can be done as a corollary to A. So B, A. Um, so again, if sigma is nice, then, um, well, let's really, set up some, some picture. So we've got, um, we've got sigma. We've got sigma plus, which is the positive push-off. The ray vector field goes this way. Um, we've got sigma minus. Uh, OK. So now I sigma, this is gamma, the gamma that we use for sigma, for I sigma. Here's the gamma that we use for sigma plus. I'll call it gamma plus. And here's the gamma that we use for sigma minus, gamma minus. OK? If sigma is nice, then W of um, sigma plus um, medium sigma minus, or in other words, with two stops, um, is equivalent to uh, a particular gluing, W of sigma um, glued. Uh, and I'm not going to say very much about what I mean by glued, but I will say a little bit um, once I'm done writing the corollary. Um, so it's glued along I sigma in that direction to W of M sigma. And so now I should say, so what is this? Well, I'll say this in words. Um, so this um, this uh, is sometimes written. Um, w of sigma, um, w of m sigma. It's what's called a semi-orthogonal decomposition. Um, it says that this is a category which has two full subcategories in it, which generate. Um, and such that there are only morphisms in one direction. So object, if I take an object in here and an object in here, then I only get morphisms from things here to things here. I don't get any morphisms in the other direction. Okay. Um, it's some convenient algebraic uh, model for complicated categories. You break them up into pieces which only have maps in one direction. Okay. Um, in this model, um, let's, I should write down what is I sigma plus. So I sigma just maps to here. Um, wait, no, that's not right. Uh, I sig sigma doesn't show up anymore. There's just sigma plus and sigma minus. What is I sigma plus? I sigma plus um, is identity um, in the first component um, from W of sigma to W of sigma. So in other words, this, so W of sigma is the, is just lives right here. It lives near sigma plus. Um, sigma minus, well, it doesn't show up in this picture, but it can be described algebraically. I sigma minus is the cone of identity. Uh, if you 
are saying cones of A infinity functors, what's going on? Just the main thing to know is that there's an explicit algebraic formula for all of this. Um, and that's important. There first, shouldn't I? Yeah. Okay. So, what do we have so far? We have Louvo domains, we have sectors, which are Louvo domains with extra Louvo domains at their boundary. Uh, and we have the, all these Fukai categories and some ways of going from one to the other. Uh, now let's start doing some geometry. The definition, at least a little bit of geometry. Um, uh, maybe not to do it this way. Let's go with the lemma. The following are equivalent. So I want to now study the geometry of the embeddings sigma, sigma minus, and sigma plus. I have three embeddings of a fixed Louvo domain into a contact manifold. I'm going to study how those compare. So one of there is a positive isotopy. Sigma plus to sigma minus. I don't know a standard term for an isotopy from one thing to another. I'm just going to write that, that, which I guess usually means something else. But there's a positive isotopy, sigma plus to sigma minus, in uh, boundary of M minus sigma. So I take out the original copy of. So now I can't. Well, I backwards anyway, since I'm asking for positive isotopy, but. I now need to somehow flow forwards. So positive means it's positively transverse to both the contact distribution and to the stop itself. I have a positive isotope. So I can ask, is there a positive isotope that starts at the top thing, moves forward, and somehow ends up at the bottom thing? Um, notice if, I'm, if I have some W, so if, if here's C, I have W, and it's got some critical locus. Um, and sigma lives out here. Then here's sigma plus, here's sigma minus. And there is such a positive isotopy. Uh, so this is going to be some generalization of having that picture. The second condition is there is an isotopy. sigma plus to sigma minus in the boundary of m minus sigma. So I can ignore the word positive, and it's still true. Um, there is a symplectomorphism. I should really say, I'll say, lethal symplectomorphism. Um, from m hat, the completion. So in order to state the third one, I really need to work on like with the completed thing. So I don't need to worry about kind of changing volumes of things by a little bit. M hat, um, m hat exchanging. Um, sigma plus and sigma minus. So I should say, I started out with this notion, and then it turned out that I could do something with this notion. People had already studied this notion, 
and it took me six months to realize they were equivalent. Um, okay, so let's actually give the proof of this. Uh, so one implies two is obvious, I hope. Um, one implies two, check. Two implies three. But, well, if you have this isotopy, it turns out that you can drag um, the this isotopy lives in the contact boundary, and you can drag the isotopy of the stop into a contactomorphism, a family of contactomorphisms of the boundary. Um, there's a little bit of subtlety here um, in terms of the one form, but you can first, there's a deformation you can do to make the one form um, not change along the isotopy, and then you can truly drag the symplectomorphism. So this is some, some kind of like, um, um, gray um, um, isotopic extension. Um, basically, you apply gray stability in um, a family. Okay, how about three? What's that? The completion. The three implies one. Um, so this is the non-obvious part, I hope. Um, you have a symplectomorphism of this completion, um, which means you have a contactomorphism of the boundary, which, which does this in particular, right? Um, I guess I could have written that as a fourth option. You have a contactomorphism of the boundary, which, which accomplishes this. Um, So three implies one. Um, so what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to take this picture. So now I have this short positive, so here's sigma. I have this short positive uh, path from sigma. So look at my um, phi be the symplectomorphism. No, that's phi be the symplectomorphism induced. Tectomorphism. Ah, I ran out of space. Phi is the induced contactomorphism. In other words, it's the restriction of the symplectomorphism to the boundary at infinity. Uh, but, um, um, uh, what should I call this? Um, X be the short. Uh, positive isotopy um, from um, sigma minus to sigma plus, uh, then concatenate it with um, with phi um, of x. I can take x and I can apply phi to it, and I'm going to get some positive isotopy from sigma plus to sigma minus. But that isotopy, well, it'll be embedded, but it could cross the original x. Oh, let's get it forward. But it can't have any self-intersections near the endpoints. Because both of these are positive and they're embedded. Uh, so if I take something which is positive and embedded and it is and it leaves a point, and that's an endpoint, it, it just it can't like come back to that endpoint because it's the the path that 
You have to embed it, right? Uh, so what that means, well, let's draw this again. That thing. So near each of these endpoints, it's positively embedded. So now I can just say, declare that, oh, actually this was my original sigma. Here's sigma plus, and here's sigma minus. Um, so I can now take small um, replace um, um, sigma um, plus, or now relabel sigma plus as sigma, and take small push -up. that constructs an, a positive isotopy from the small push-off of sigma plus to the small negative push-off of sigma plus, which is positive, uh, does not cross sigma plus. It, crosses, it could cross itself elsewhere, but we never for, forbade that. Okay. That's the proof. Uh, and this is great because, well, first, let me make a definition. Sigma is swappable. Now, it turns out there's a theorem uh, which says if, um, if sigma is swappable, nice things happen. So let me start with the theorem which were already out there. So, so theorem uh, due to um, If, so if I take um, the cosphere bundle, S upper star, um, S, I take some point little q in big Q. So this is um, in the boundary of um, the disk, co-disk bundle of q. I'm just going to say cotangent bundle. I apologize for disk versus infinite. Uh, issues, but if I take the cosphere fiber to a point in a co in a co-disk bundle, is swappable. Then uh, two things are true. One, uh, pi one of q less than or equal to two. Two. Uh, H upper star of the universal cover of Q with the coefficients has one generator. One algebra generator. So it's a truncated polynomial. Fairly strong cons uh, constraint on the topology of, um, of Q. So in in this case, it, if it's not simply connected, in fact, it's homotopy equivalent to a real projective space. And if it is simply connected, there's a short list of known examples. Uh, so. So 
what their mark is. Uh, this generalizes uh, theorems of um, Bach and Samuelson from Riemannian geometry to um, symplectic uh, geometry. Oh, I'm stuck. Already being swappable in kind of the simplest example you have of uh, kind of interesting Legendre. You take a cotangent bundle, which is the simplest kind of Liouville domain. You put the conormal to a point. That's one of the simplest possible Legendrians. And already swappability kind of tells you something very interesting about Q, about the manifold itself um, in that case. What about more generally? Um, so when I talk about swappability without like saying which condition I have in mind, usually I will have the last condition, the condition about the existence of a symplectomorphism or a contactomorphism, uh, because that's kind of the most general looking one, even though it turns out they're all equivalent. Uh, so that's kind of the one that completely depart the realm of geometry. There are a lot of definitions here. Ano and Lodvinenko. I guess maybe I should say Ano and then Ano and Lodvinenko. The normally, this definition is normally stated along with a the theorem. Uh, I'm going to skip the theorem for reasons of time. Uh, it's not a long theorem. It's just a few extra statements. But I think it's going to kind of start making everything even more confusing. So, say. So this is a functor of a infinity categories, or well, whatever sort of category you would like to think about. Say so f is a functor. Uh, left. I need this chalk just runs up so quickly. Chuck in the yellow box, okay. That's empty. I'll just go. I'll just go the big thing. It's more comfortable to hold it anyway. Oh, wait, there's even this one I can do. No, it's blue. Left and right. Left and right, I joins L and R. Satisfying. So um, I have a functor between some categories. I have left and right adjoints. Uh, it's very convenient in algebra to have left and right adjoints. Uh, from my point of view, the, the main point of having left and right adjoints um, is that it tells you that your category is not too big. Um, if, or specifically, it tells you that the relative size of your categories is um, 
comparable. You can always take modules over your category, which makes it much, much bigger. But if you don't do that, then having an adjoint says that the categories have pretty similar size. too much about the category theory, I just feel like I should write this definition. Um, and there will be kind of a point um, that I want to get out of it. Oh, wait. Our inverse equivalences. are essentially going to be the same thing except backwards. Um, and I'm fine, fine. But um, um, goes to. Oh, and when I say defined by this, I guess I should say defined by fitting into an exact triangle of that type. the category of A infinity functors is um, assuming the categories are nice and it has cones and you, if I say I, if I write this triangle I mean that T is the cone of C if I write this triangle I mean well U is the cone of this thing or T is the co-cone of U satisfies these two conditions, then it's called spherical. It also satisfies two other conditions, which I won't write. So that's a definition. Uh, it involves some triangles. But it's very closely related to this notion of swappability. So let me give an initial theorem. sigma is spherical. adjoint functor is geometrically described by you take a Lagrangian 
in um, the total space, uh, and you push it against a fiber, and you intersect with the fiber. is induced by wrap once. That was the picture I drew earlier. Um, if you have um, this projection to C, you have sigma, sigma plus, sigma minus. And I took this long isotopy from sigma plus to sigma minus. That's some kind of wrapping. And if you just close that up, that gives you um, a symplectomorphism of the sector M with sigma, and a sig symplectomorphism induces an equivalence of the Foucault category. So the dual twist is used by that, and M prime is induced by my measure. So the, what this tells you is that we have spherical functors in symplectic geometry. And if we have geometry and we produce some algebra, and this algebra is equipped with spherical functors. So what does that mean, uh, kind of, or rather, what can you deduce from that? Well, uh, I said that having left and right adjoints is a smallness condition. It tells you that kind of if one category is not too big, then the other category is not too big. Uh, and concrete, uh, if one of the categories is small enough um, that kind of you know exactly that if, if one of these is easy enough to understand that you can completely understand T or T prime or M or M prime, then you can express this composition as a cone involving identity and some other equivalents. Uh, and that gives you strong bounds on um, the size of Fleur homology. That says um, these categories, remember, there's some way of encoding Fleur homology. And if the category is tightly controlled by this functor, then the Fleur homology kind of has, is not very big. It's kind of strongly controlled as well by the functor. So let's state um, one more theorem. Let's state it up there. So there's an algebraic theorem. Chalk. Hold it just the right way. No. Is it a different one? Theorem of So a theorem of Halpern Leisner and Shipman. Halpern Leisner is one person. Spherical, uh, if and only if um, the semi orthogonal the semi orthogonal decomposition of the type that I wrote earlier. Um, so that's a. Lude 
uh, along f to b uh, is uh, extends is part of a four periodic. So, in other words, um, what, did, what do I mean? I mean, if I take B, well, I can take its right orthogonal, that's A. Um, remember, there are maps from A to B, but no maps from B to A. So, the right orthogonal of B is A. Um, I can take the right orthogonal of A, that's something else. I can take the right orthogonal of something else, that's yet another thing. And then I can take the right orthogonal one more time, and that's supposed to be B. That's what it means. Um, well, that's one interpretation of F being spherical. Uh, so th this is how they wrote the theorem. Well, I don't think they ever actually wrote like four orthogonals in a row, but they, this is essentially the theorem that they wrote. But there's another way of stating this theorem. So the corollary to find a spherical swap to be equivalence of A glued by F 